Okay, so I've got my uh, Firepower Asset set up and I'm connected via the ASDM. The first thing I need to do is download the AnyConnect packages from Cisco and upload them into the firewall. You can see I've already uploaded the one for Mac OS. So if you've got a file transfer, I'm just going to upload the Windows one. Now the ones you want to upload have got a PKG extension on them. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of them. So you can see the PKG extension on the end. Just upload the Windows one. Now they need to be in flash memory on the Firepower ASA before you start. Cool, so we can close that down. Uh, now, there is a wizard, you've got a wizard, VPN wizard, any connect VPN wizard. It'll make things considerably simpler for you. Click next. Now you need to give the connection a profile name. And we're going to terminate on the outside interface. Click next. Now I only want SSL, so I'm going to untick IPsec. And I'm not doing always on or anything, so I'm just going to use the self sign cert that's on the ASA. So I'm going to leave that blank. Now the images that we uploaded when we started, we now need to tell any connect which ones to use. So I'll select the Windows one. Click OK. And then you need to also select the Mac one. Now there are images for Linux and ARM processors and all sorts of things. But these are the two main ones. Okay, click next. Now I am only going to authenticate using the local database. So usernames and passwords will exist on the Firepi SA device. If you want to use Radius or Kerberos or, or any other method of AAA, I've got plenty of articles on the website to show you how to do that. But I would suggest if you set an AnyConnect up the first time, you just use the local authentication database. You don't need to change anything on here. But you will need to create a pool of addresses. Think of this as a DHCP pool that will lease IP addresses to your remote AnyConnect clients. A starting and ending IP address, and it's just a standard 24 bit network. Next, now by default, it'll put the open DNS DNS servers in because it's read them from the firewall config. If you have any wins, then you need to get into the 21st century and then you put your domain name in the bottom as well. Now, make sure you tick at this box, this is much simpler than it used to be, and you can leave everything on the defaults, and that will make sure that any traffic coming from inside is exempted from that, which is what we want. Click Next, have a quick review of the settings, and click Finish. Now I've got preview commands turned on, you may not. And hopefully that'll just tick across. Uh, now one thing that you might want to do is enable split tunneling, otherwise when you use this Connect, they will lose connectivity to everything else. Most people want this turned on. If you go to group policies, find your group policy, split tunneling, untick inherit, and change it to tunnel networks in the list below. Then untick the network list, click manage, and what we're doing is we're creating an ACL. So we've got a standard ACL, add an ACL, give it a sensible name like split tunnel, and then add an access control entry to that ACL. And what we're going to do is set that to permit anything from the inside network and what that does is it only encrypts traffic that's actually going to the inside network so if you want to browse the internet or talk to local printers on your LAN while you're connected etc all that stuff will work And then don't forget to finally, to save your hard work, 
to flash, otherwise when you reboot the device the config will have disappeared. Now just jumping on an external Windows 10 client, give it a test. Uh, I'm using self side so it's going to give me a warning about the certificate, that's fine. If I can log on with my test user. And that's just connected. Just to prove it's not smoke and mirrors, I'll see if I can ping something that I know is on that network, like my NAS box, which is on 10.255.254.212. There you go, it's replying. That's your only connect set up and working. Now, what you may get if you've uh, not ever used a client before is you may need to go into preferences and untick that bottom box that says block connections from untrusted servers because you're using a self-signed certificate. Otherwise, you'll just get a big red error message when you try and connect. That's just done. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us www.pnetlife.com. Thank you.